guys, it's Eric, owner of Farpoint Farms here in the mountains of North Carolina. And today we dive deep into part two of why I miss Radio Shack and why you should too. I'm going to talk to you about the early years. Not Radio Shack's early years, but my early years with Radio Shack. When, uh, when we're young and, and uh, you know, everything is so exciting. I, I don't think kids today get that because everything is always right there at their fingertips with the internet. But back in our day, you know, you took a trip to the mall. And, uh, and to, to even know that I wanted to go to a Radio Shack, we had to have those catalogs. And I'm sure you had plenty of them, too. I still have some of them, in fact. Dreaming about owning huge satellite dishes and monstrous CB radio setups. And later on, of course, cool computers. But today we're looking at, at the early years. So even though I dreamed about those things, the things that interested me the most at that point in my life would have to be the toys. I mean, the, the toys. And Radio Shack was just like the king of electronic toys. I mean, take a look at this, an electronic blackjack game. That's not even digital. That's just a manual game, but it works, you know. And then we move on to things like chess. Oh, God, I had a friend whose dad had one of these things set up in the house, and he was always playing it. The Tandy Vision 1, which was an Intellivision knockoff, and they made an Intellivision or Tandy Vision 2, and they had a several other video game systems. These one, these little tabletop handhelds, these were so cool. I had these, and of course, the little handhelds. This was the Game Boy of its time. Man, I had two or three of these that were gifts. In fact, I think I had this exact game. So, just incredible, incredible time to be alive with these relatively simple LCD tabletop games. And of course, later on, as I grew older, that would grow into a a passion for computers, but at this point in my life, computers were just mystifying, you know. They were obviously outside of the reach of pretty much all households, but we were able to obtain handheld and tabletop and sometimes, you know, games that hooked to the TV set. So these were just incredible things. And of course, my first uh, video game was a Pong unit, like many of you at my age. So we had the Radio Shack Pong, the, tele the tabletop tennis, as they called it. So, uh, of course, from there, I got a little older, and my taste changed, and, and I moved on to other things, and those things were the cars. Yeah, we'll get into that in a second here. But, yeah, there's, that's actually, I think, the game that I had. So I know it had the old six-shooter. It was pretty cool. <laughs> and, uh, and Astro Thunder, I definitely had that. That was a Christmas present that I played with until I wore it out. So, uh, yeah, those are great. But yeah, time went on, and it was time to move on to cars. And man, I'm sure if you were a Radio Shack shopper or fan, you had at least one of these. I'm going to show a lot of pictures of these. Now, I personally had one of those. I got it used at a yard sale years later. But yeah, big four-wheel drive trucks. They were so cool. <laughs> There's the old Porsche. Those would go so fast as long as it was on hardwoods or on pavement. You were A-OK. -okay. And we had the simpler ones, like the old, uh, you know, the push a button and it would turn in reverse. That was, the, I had a lot of those growing up, little Layard sale finds and stuff like that there, those Ferraris. Gosh, here's a picture coming up here that's just so cool. It's like a list of all their awesome cars at that particular time. Of course, you can see a robot in the background, and we'll move on to those here in a minute. But, yeah, cars, cars, and more cars. I actually had, I still have a Radio Shack remote control car. I have a mid-90s Dodge uh, four-wheel drive that still works with a 9.6 rechargeable battery. Because, man, when these things took double A's and 9 volts, you just had to feed them, like, constantly. So that was kind of a cool upgrade. And, of course, from there, well, I mean, where do we go from there but robots? Yeah, oh, my gosh, I got a little older, and there was the Armatron and the Robbie the Robot series. Oh, the, look at this one. I don't even remember seeing this one in the store, but the Battle Claw. I like that. That looks pretty... That looks like a whole really cool thing. I did have a Robbie the Robot, Talking Robbie. Oh, man. I got that at a yard sale. There's Robbie Sr. Never had one of those. That is also known as the Omnibot 2000. But I'll tell you what, those things are highly coveted to this day. And who among us does not remember an Armatron? My friend Tim, I'll give him a shout out here, had one of those. And I used to love going to his house to play with that. I don't remember Galactic Man, but apparently he was a Radio Shack toy. Now, I do remember this next one uh, because this was, again, not, not the Armatron, but this, this next uh, was kind of like the poor man's robot. It was an inflatable that looked like a robot, but underneath it, it was just a remote control car. You see that there? Yeah, and you just push the button, you turn in reverse, but uh, still, still cool to have. It was very fun to play with those things when you're a kid. You can imagine. Kids today don't imagine. And of course, 
As you got older, you could definitely get into the make it your own, like the Junkyard Wars and Make It kits that they offered for a while. I never built any of those, but I certainly dreamed of building my own robot, and uh, I had to settle for this inflatable guy like this guy here. There's old talking robots are just so cool. Have them walk in the room and scare the hell out of your parents. <laughs> of course, from there, my interest in electronics grew, and that is where Radio Shack made us all smarter. The kits, holy cow, the kits, yes. I was lucky enough to get a 160-in-1 do-it-yourself kit from Radio Shack for Christmas one year, and the rest is history. I learned to love electronic projects and uh, learned to make radios like this one here, and just so many cool things that I built. Alarm systems, water moisture temperature sensors, all these kits that Radio Shack put out. How many people went on to become engineers or, or just even playing with electronics that owe it to Radio Shack. How many people got interested in radios because of Radio Shack and learning how radio theory works and building these cool kits, learning about ICs, <laughs> learning how relays work. I mean, this the information I learned from these kits follows me through to this day, and I really, I really hate it for kids that are missing out on this. And, and of course, what would these kits be like without what happened next in life? And that's moving on to radios. I mean, learning about radios and the kits and then wanting to experience that. And radio Shack with the radios. Oh, man. Everything from those little realistics and the archers and, oh, man, the CB radios, ham radios, shortwave radios. You know, and that's another video. Of course, we'll get into that at another time. But just without mentioning that that got me into radio, would, would be doing Radio Shack any justice. And just like that, those electronic kits also brought me into my uh, computers. At a time when computers were not on everybody's desk, they were there. <laughs> yeah, who can forget this as well? The flashlight of the month where you get the battery of the month club. You go in there, you get your free flashlight, and then you had to buy about 8,000 batteries to go with it. But yeah, computers. That We're going to have different segments on CB radios. And, and of course, Radio Shack without the computers would, wouldn't be Radio Shack at all. So we'll get into those in part two and part three. And then, unfortunately, the decline of Radio Shack. But that's uh, another video for another time. For this, this is about it for me today. Enjoy it and think of the future because Radio Shack was all about the future. Take care. Something that needs a little fixing on both.